Greetings, fellow stargazers and astrophotographers. I'm Sean from Visible Dark, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at Game Script for Making Masks by Hartmut Borneman. You want to install the game script first in order to be able to access it under the uh, script menu. Um, and you do the uh, installation of it by going to resources, updates, manage repositories, and adding in this URL here, which I'll uh, leave in the description below. When you add that, it'll add all of the scripts by Hartmut Orneman. Um, but we're going to be looking at just the game script uh, for this particular tutorial. And you simply click add, paste in that URL, click OK. I won't click because I've already got it added. Uh, but you click OK once you've uh, pasted that URL in and uh, it'll show up in here. And then you just click OK and you'll want to run a check for updates. When you run the check for updates, it'll find the uh, scripts and install them for you. Ask ask for them to be installed. Um, okay, so the game script allows you to make a variety of different masks, but it's a graphical way of making masks, which is different than the typical uh, method in PixInsight. Um, this is actually extremely useful, and masks will be your friend uh, when you're working with PixInsight and you're processing images. The more masks that uh, you can create, um, the more detailed you can get with your processing, specific that you can be with your processing, which is often quite helpful because you don't necessarily want to process or, or apply a particular uh, setting or tool to the entire image you just want to apply it to a specific part of that image and this is what masking will allow you to do so with the game mask script installed go to script go to utilities and scroll down to game click that and the user interface will pop up once uh, PixInsight loads it and this is what it looks like. You'll see your image here, and you'll see a bunch of different masks that you can create. Uh, luminance mask, gradient mask, binary, brightness, and star mask. Um, the gradient mask and the star mask are probably the two that you'll use the most, um, but uh, the others can be quite useful as well uh, under certain conditions. Um, if you select to do two masks, so let's say a gradient mask and a star mask, it'll output the gradient mask uh, but it'll also provide you a gradient mask with the star mask incorporated into it. So it's uh, quite handy to have. How do you do it? How does it work? Uh, simple. You want to add a new mask that uh, places this green circle on your image with the uh, five nodes that allow you to um, click on those nodes and stretch the image or the uh, the mask uh, to how you want it to shape. So in this case here, we want to focus just on the M31 galaxy itself. Um, the one thing I will say about this uh, particular method is the uh, the nodes are really small and, and hard to click on, um, but you'll get it eventually. Uh, just takes a couple tries. Um, so you can see how I can adjust the, the mask and fit it to just the, uh, the right shape that I want. Um, so in this case here, um, we're going to extend it a little bit on this end of it, but it, it, it's very handy to be able to uh, graphically create your masks. And you can create more than one mask at a time too. You're not just limited to doing one mask. I'm trying to get that uh, node there. It's very tricky to grab that. They're very tiny. You have to be very, very precise. You can zoom in and uh, make some finer adjustments if you like. Um, I'll do that, try and grab that node there. It makes it a little uh, easier to grab. 
um, but you can see your scroll bars allow you to, to move around. So if we were going to create a mask for the smaller galaxy off to the side, uh, M31, um, we could simply add another one and uh, adjust that. And that could be very handy too um, for doing some delicate work on a smaller galaxy. And you can see how easily I'm creating a mask here. Um, and visually doing it. It's, it's fantastic uh, script, works very effectively, um, and you'll find that uh, you get a lot of use out of it. Uh, so let's just scroll out again here, or zoom out, I should say. And we'll move over here. We're gonna reselect this mask. So that we can adjust it slightly. It's not so bad. Just go up here and lengthen it a little bit. Again, you got to be very specific grabbing those nodes, but it can be done. Okay, so once you have your masks created or your mask created, um, you can output them now. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to create a gradient mask and a star mask um, for both. And we click OK. And you'll see that it starts creating your masks. And it'll take a minute to do that, but uh, the end result will be uh, some great masks that you can use. And uh, you'll get to see how they can be applied. Okay, and it's done uh, creating the masks for us and you can see that we have a gradient mask with a uh, star mask incorporated into it and we have our gradient mask here um, and both uh, both of them that we created are, are showing. So we can use both of these now um, and apply them to the image so that we can do specific work uh, on our M31. Um, so an example of that would be um, applying the mask and you can see how the areas uh, the background is protected that's the area in red and uh, the galaxy itself is left um, uh, available for um, processing and, uh, and uh, applying certain uh, techniques uh, to it to uh, to develop it as you uh, process your image We'll just turn off that uh, mask since we don't want to see it while we're doing any work on it. But if we want to demonstrate uh, the power of uh, the game mask script, um, certainly uh, being able to graphically create masks as we did is uh, a huge advantage in PixInsight, I think, and uh, uh, very useful, very helpful. Um, but applying the mask that we created and then making adjustments um, are very easy. If we want to do some uh, noticeable adjustment just for example purposes, um, if we uh, open up the curves tool and uh, click on the preview so we can see what we're doing, um, you can see how the mask allows us to work just within the galaxy itself and uh, nothing else is affected. So we can actually make uh, adjustments uh, fine adjustments and uh, apply it specifically to the galaxy um, that uh, won't affect the rest of the image which is a really valuable tool. Another example could be applying saturation to your images um, that uh, a lot of times people apply saturation to the entire image and uh, that could be useful. Um, under certain circumstances, uh, but there are cases where you maybe don't want to apply that saturation to the entire um, to the entire image. Um, you just want to apply it to maybe the galaxy. You're you're in a pro you're at a point where you're fine tuning your image, and you're and you, you just need to add that uh, bit of saturation, that little bit more saturation. So um, that's another great example that we can show if we go. Um, uh, again, you can you can do saturation in two different ways. You can use the saturation uh, tool, which is here, and do your adjustments. Um, 
uh, which which I do use. Um, you can also use the curves uh, tool and click on saturation over here, and that allows you to add saturation uh, to your your image. And we'll see that we can saturate that uh, galaxy just just ever so slightly. We'll add that. This is all just for example purposes uh, before I uh, would ever get to the curves or the color saturation with an image uh, um, I would be uh, doing a number of other steps uh, including the first one which would be a dynamic background extraction but for the the purpose of demonstrating the game mask script uh, how it worked and uh, how it works and uh, also applying masks and how they can be utilized uh, I'm skipping a number of uh, number of steps that I would normally do so We applied the mask, and I'm just going to turn it back on. We applied the mask so that the background was protected, and we could apply our curves and saturation specifically to the, the galaxy itself, which is uh, very precise work uh, that we're doing. Um, but we can also flip that around. And now let's say that we wanted to add some saturation for the stars, um, bring that up a little bit. Uh, we can we can do that by simply inverting the mask as we did here. So that's how it was before. And then we click the invert button and we've inverted the mask. So now the galaxy is protected, but the background and the stars are going to be available to us and we can work with those independently. And uh, we can add saturation to those stars uh, very easily by uh, using the saturation tool. Again, you can use the, the sa color saturation tool, or you can do it in curves, um, but we can boost up. And you can see how those stars got uh, a boost of saturation, and I'll just uh, do a before and after there. Got a nice boost of saturation in the background and in the stars. And we did that independent of the galaxy, and that's often uh, the case that uh, you'll want to apply a little more to certain areas of the image um, and a little less to others. Um, in this case here, I'd want to be applying more color saturation to M31. That's the uh, the highlight of the image and uh, what we want to um, uh, feature. And um, the surrounding stars and background are uh, important, but um, I don't want them to necessarily have as much saturation. As, uh, as the galaxy does. So that's a great way for um, masks uh, to be utilized and, uh, and help you um, fine tune your image. So I'll just add that color saturation to this image since we uh, have it set, ready to go. And there, that's done. So we could close that. And now the other mask that we created uh, which uses the uh, star mask incorporated into the gradient mask um, that can be useful uh, for you if um, let's say the uh, effect that uh, you wanted to have on your image uh, was to uh, be specifically on the the galaxy the dust lanes and and uh, not necessarily the stars within the the galaxy itself um, so if we look at this mask, um, what we see is the uh, stars are actually protected along with the background. So any work that we do is just going to be on the galaxy dust lanes and the, and the core, um, which can be very uh, useful under, uh, again, certain circumstances that you might want to apply curves, um, you might want to apply saturation, or you might even want to um, um, do some HDR multi-scale transform uh, at the core of the galaxy. Um, that is a, another useful uh, mask for uh, doing that. Um, what I would probably do in this particular case though is uh, create a mask um, that is specific for the core of the galaxy and uh, use um, the HDR multi-scale transform to uh, fix that brightness so that it's not uh, washing out details in the, uh, in the center and we could uh, easily do that by again opening our uh, game mask script and creating a mask uh, a gradient mask specific to the core um, very easy to uh, add your mask again uh, you're simply clicking add and you want to 
You want to make it a little larger because it is a gradient mask, so it's going to feather itself uh, out from the center. Um, but if we did a smaller gradient mask, such as that, and uh, make sure gradient mask is selected and click OK, um, the game mask will uh, cre be created for us. And there it is. So now we have a mask that we created that's a little smaller and it's very specific to the core of the galaxy as we can see here. So we could actually use that mask now to fix the core of the galaxy um, with the HDR multi-scale transform tool. And if we just uh, do a preview here uh, first to demonstrate, um, I'll drop that uh, HDR multi-scale transform onto the preview and we'll see what effect it has in fixing the, the core of M31, fixing that brightness. And there we have it. So that particular setting, you can see the difference that it had. I actually think that's pretty good. I like that. Um, it's not taking it to an extreme and it's still leaving a little bit of brightness in the uh, the center of the galaxy, which I find appealing. Uh, artist prerogative, of course, but um, I think that's a nice, uh, a nice fix to the core of the galaxy. So we'll want to go with that, and uh, we simply go back to our image and apply it. And there we have the uh, HDR multi-scale applied using the uh, mass that we created in the uh, game mass script. And I'm going to put a link to download the game script uh, and and Hartmut uh, Bormann's other scripts as well. Um, like I said in the description below, uh, these are all owned by him, uh, created by him, and uh, I'm simply just uh, showing you um, how it works and and how you can um, incorporate it into your PixInsight. Um, so I hope you found this useful and I hope that uh, you find using the game script uh, makes creating your masks easier and you're creating better masks and uh, that it really helps uh, boost your image processing skills. Thanks for watching, clear skies and keep looking up.